Matthew Reinhardt doesn't just tell stories. His stories literally pop off the page. With 28 titles sold in 15 different languages worldwide, his unique form of 3D art brings that extra dimension to the written word. Growing up, I drew on in everything that I could. I built things from cardboard and construction paper, and I really don't remember any box that left the house that was unmarred by me. I mean, anything to build it, you know, build something that was in my head. Even though he had a natural flair for drawing and sketching, a potential life eked out as a starving artist didn't sit well with Matthew. Instead, he registered for pre-med classes. But it was while working a summer job for the Eye Institute that inspiration struck. Here I am as a 23-year-old kid, just got out of school, going to morgues, and I'm taking out dead people's eyeballs. And when I saw young people, especially, who were, were donors for, for, um, uh, that I would have to visit, um, it made me really set, see that you know, life can end very, very quickly. So uh, take as much time as you can to do what you need to do to, to have a great career. And that's what really made me switch and um, really going after it because life is short. So instead of taking apart dead people's body parts, he decided to pursue his lifelong dream of making Transformers. I'm a very large child, I'm like a 40 year old kid, and um, uh, I really wanted to design Transformers because I'm a huge Transformer uh, fan and collector. I have thousands. I have an off-site storage facility, so they're not all in my home or work studio. I had hoped to get an internship or a job working with Hasbro, who actually manufactures the Transformers. Um, I wasn't able to do that, but right out of school, I, was, uh, I, I worked at Nickelodeon for a bit uh, on a show called Blue's Clues and making models. I was really good at making things like that. His ability to construct eventually drew Matthew into the world of pop-up books. After collaborating on a number of books, he set out on his own. Today, as an internationally recognized pop-up artist who writes the stories and creates the pop-ups, Matthew has engineered a full circle moment for himself. His latest book, Transformers. Yeah, I'm trying to make this guy, which is Omega Supreme. And he's supposed to be the tallest pop-up um, in this book. And hopefully the tallest pop-up I've ever made. But I have to make it probably about this tall to really make him big. So I'm just figuring out, you know, I'm seeing how the paper is bowing right now. And it's going to take some time. But the pop-up process always begins with the story. And once that is in place, the construction begins. I use basic concepts, and there's no geometry used. I don't sit um, in my office and use a calculator and a compass and make sure everything is lined up properly. Um, the, I, it's really just seeing how things work together, seeing how the pieces move. And my first one is very rough. It's a lot of paper and tape and it's, it's make sure that everything works just right. From there, the design is imported into the computer and a dye line pattern is made for mass production. Matthew then works out the palette, blending his own colors and creating textures to allow his pop-ups to jump off the page. So I will then uh, use my drawings as a map to cut out the pieces of, of very different colored and different textured papers that we make here in the studio. I'd rather look at the world through a little bit modified colorful glasses. And so I may say, I want this brachiosaurus to be purple, but let's, let's make it look kind of like elephant skin texture and maybe give it some flecks of yellow. Every detail in Matthew's books is handcrafted. 
Every color variation and texture is a result of paper being applied to paper. There's a little wrinkle here and here on the edges of his, his fingers, because sometimes we have those wrinkles ourselves and like in our hands. So since he has big sort of globular fingers, I thought, oh, well, we would want to see that bump. You can even see his knuckle right here. And there has to be a little bit of shadow. So of course, you're going to see a little bit of red here just to, just to denote where some of those wrinkles will be, just as in, just in his hand. I have to fill in areas of color. People do it with a computer and they, you know, push automatic fill and they fill it. So I just use paper and cut it out. And I've become so quick at, at painting, or, or excuse me, cutting paper, that it's just second nature. And I kind of use the X-Acto knife as, as almost like a pencil. It's almost, you know, like a writing tool because I can get very, very detailed. The work in this book is pretty detailed, but for things like Star Wars, I have to get really um, detailed with faces. For example, in the first Star Wars book, I had to make Carrie Fisher's face as Princess Leia. And those eyes, her eyes were so specific, it took me probably about two hours just to get her eyes just right. And um, because it was, you know, it's Princess Leia, you got it. She has to look like Princess Leia. For Matthew, pop-up books aren't just about creating 3D images for interesting stories. For him, the payoff comes from knowing that his art is bringing kids back to books. I wasn't a huge reader as a kid. I, I, I love the pictures, uh, but I found that the pictures brought me to the words. And I hear a lot of teachers tell me, you know, I have a lot of young readers who aren't really as much into the actual reading part, but your books really pull them in and it makes me really happy that I can do that and share that. Matthew's books are an effort to draw kids away from computer screens. 